What's up guys, in this video we're going to explore how we can get predictions from our Keras model in a slightly different way than how we've seen it done in the browser. Here we'll be calling our backend web service from both PowerShell on Windows and curl in a bash terminal. So let's get to it. You may recall that in the first video in this series on deploying a Keras model to Flask, I stated that once our model is being hosted by Flask, we'll be able to interact with the model over HTTP regardless of which programming language our front-end application is written in. We've seen all the details for how to build a front-end web application with JavaScript and HTML that runs in the browser and requests predictions from our model. Now we're going to get an idea for how easy it is to access our model using other languages and platforms. We're first going to show how this is done using PowerShell on a Windows machine. And we'll then see how this is done using curl in a bash terminal. So before we start, note that we'll be using the same predict Flask app that we created in part five of this series. Everything on the back end will be running in the exact same way as before. So go ahead and make sure your Predict app is up and running. All right, let's get started with PowerShell. If you're not already familiar, PowerShell comes pre-installed on Windows machines and consists of a command line terminal and an associated PowerShell scripting language. If you're watching this from a Windows machine, go ahead and type PowerShell in the search bar and you should see it come up. What we're going to do is in PowerShell, we'll access an image file stored on disk and process it to get it in the format that the predict endpoint expects. We'll then make an HTTP POST request with the image data and check out the response we get with the predictions for that image. So you see, this is the exact same flow we went through when we developed our web application. We're doing the same thing now, but rather than using JavaScript and HTML and interacting with the browser, we're now using PowerShell, the scripting language, and interacting with the PowerShell console. All right, this is the image we'll be working with. Now in PowerShell, we first create a variable called file name, and we set that equal to the full path to the image. Next, we create this variable called bytes, which is assigned the bytes from the image file. We then convert the bytes into base64 and store the base64 encoded image as this base64 image variable. We then create a PowerShell object called message whose key is image and value is the base64 encoded image. Since the predict endpoint expects the request to be in JSON, we convert the message to JSON and store it in this JSONified variable. We then make the HTTP request using this invoke rest method command. We supply the type of request, post, and provide the URL to the predict endpoint along with the JSONified message and we store the response for this request in this response variable. Lastly, we access prediction from response and format it using the format list command, which will print the formatted predictions to the PowerShell console. And there it is. We now have the predictions from our model for this particular image. All right, next we're going to do this exact same thing, but in a bash terminal. So again, the first thing we do is specify which file we're working with and store it in this file name variable. Next, we convert it to base64 and store that encoding in this base64 image variable. Note, we skipped the step of converting the data into bytes before we base64 encoded it because this base64 command can encode the data directly from the image file. We then store the data in JSON, again with the key called image and the value being the base64 image data. Next, we dump this JSON into a file that we're calling data.json. And we do this as a workaround because the base64 image data appeared to be too large to send using the next command. So we're just storing the data in a file temporarily that we'll delete when we're done with it. It's not usually a go-to convention to write out things to disk for tasks like this, so if you know of another more straightforward way to do this without needing to write the data to a file, let me know in the comments. Next, we use curl to make our HTTP request. And if you're not familiar, curl is a command line tool used for transferring data. So we run the curl command specifying the type of request, again post, the data to send, which is the JSON data in the data.json file, 
and the URL to our predict endpoint. And we get the response printed to the console as we'd expect. We can then run rm data.json to delete the file we created earlier. So these examples hopefully allow you to see how relatively simple it is to make HTTP requests across languages and platforms. Just with a few lines of code, we were able to send image data and receive predictions back with both PowerShell and the Bash terminal. And there was no need to change our backend. We could access the same single endpoint with no changes across whatever language we want. If you're going to be calling your endpoint in a language we haven't yet discussed, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. There's still more to come, so stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.